Hello, everybody. So this is episode two, uh, where we're working with Google Calendar API. And the goal is to be able to type in a date into a text field. And then once you select that date, the information will be pushed via an Ajax call to uh, the Google Calendar API. And it will respond back with the available times that you have on that date and you can select a time and then once you click schedule me the goal will be to push that into the calendar and create an event uh, using the API. All this will be done using Ajax call so there will be no screen refreshing or anything. Uh, we'll also have PHP um, implementation on our web server for this as well. So there's a lot of, way to, a lot of ways to do this but I wanted to make sure that I incorporated uh, some JavaScript, some Ajax, some jQuery, some PHP, just so you can get an idea of all the little, um, the different languages you can use. So this is kind of where we're, we're at. We got this click here to link your Google data. Whenever you set up for the first time with Google, um, basically having the, the website access any Google data, you'll have to provide permission to do so. So there's different levels of permission. You can do read only, you can do write, stuff like that. But the first time you do it, there are no credentials in your web server. So this link is going to show up on your web page. Once you click that link, uh, a little pop-up will come up asking you to authorize, and then you'll click yes. Once you do that, it'll redirect back to the same page, but it'll display the text fields and the button. And this is what we did in the last episode. So we built three files, connection, calendar, and index.php. And then we just pretty much set up our environment and we dumped out the data from our calendar. Uh, so again, in episode one that we just passed, that we just finished, uh, it doesn't really do everything that it's supposed to yet. All it does is access the calendar and dumps out the data. This episode, we're actually going to not just dump out the data, but we're going to finish it out. We're going to have uh, the ability to select a date. Uh, it'll go out to the calendar, present the times, and then you can actually push it back. So it's actually functional right now. So just to show you how it works, I'm going to click uh, 4-1-2018. You can see that this just populated with some times. Time formats, you know, you can mess with those all you want, but this is just to get the functionality there. Um, but as you can see, I've got, you know, 0 through 2300. Between 8 and 10, there is no time. There's no 9 o'clock, and there is no 12 o'clock. And the reason why is because the API, once it reached out, it saw that I have a, a 9 o'clock and a 12 o'clock already scheduled. So, you know, I could add things to this, and as I add them to this, if I go back to my page, it'll show less times available for that particular day. And that's the goal. Uh, so here's how we do it. So starting with the code over here, uh, basically what we left off with, actually let me pull this up really quick here first. So this is our outline. And starting with the code, it says modify index.php. So we've got our original index.php file here. And the original one from the last episode, all we had is this document ready function with a an available dates listener. So once I change the date, it will run the get times function, which is implemented here. And we had this defined, but we didn't actually implement the schedule me. So we're going to implement the schedule me and uh, make a couple modifications or a modification to the get times function. So this is what the new one looks like. You see, I, I got a little bit of different code here. Uh, same call, same change available dates, get times. Same click on the uh, submit button listener. But now on the get times, instead of uh, dumping this out to our PID equals dump, we're going to populate the available times drop down. So that's the only change in this one. We added this schedule me function here, and this is when I click the button. So here it is right here. I say on click, on the submit click, schedule me with an instance of the button, which is this. First thing we do is we access the date value. Second thing is access the time value. Then we have this XML HTTP request. Uh, if you've never used this, uh, again, we kind of go over it a little bit on the first episode, but if you go to Google and just Google that, you'll find at w3schools.com, there's a really good tutorial that explains how this works. You literally copy this code, paste it over to your site, and then just change what you need to change. So in our case, the file name needs to change. The file is what you're going to access on your web server. And the file we're accessing is actually called slash 
calendars.php, and then we've got a query string here. Our query string is where action equals schedule me. So if you recall in the last episode, we, we created this action variable so that we could use it dynamically in our uh, calendars.php file. So I'll show you how that works again here in a minute, but just whatever function you want to call in your uh, in your server side code, you want to just give it a name here, give it the same name. So action equals schedule me, where date equals date and time equals time, and that is literally just these two values here. Then it's going to send that off to the server, and that is it for this file. Not many changes. So once it sends it to the server, it's going to go to calendars.php, so we'll go ahead and look at that one next. This is our original calendars.php. We had a get times function. And right here we said require once connection to make our connection to uh, the Google Calendar API. And then we said the HTML equals get action. And then, of course, this is the action we just mentioned um, over here in index. We say action equals get times, get times, and then it calls here, and then it runs this code. So this is how it was last time. So I'm not going to go over that, but we did make a couple of changes so that instead of um, returning a all of the events, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, manipulation here so that I only get the times that I want. So I added this. If you look here, you can see that I'm creating a date time object from the date that we sent in from the client. And then I need to get the next day so that I can get all the events for from the start to the end time, basically. The next thing I do is I create an array, and I put all of the HTML that I'm interested in into that array. You can see I've got option value equals $i, which is going to be 0, time equals 0. This is where you could play with this if you'd like. If you don't like the format of having 0 through 2300, you can use AMs, PMs, or whatever you want. But you just need to mess with the date time manipulations for that to work. Um, in my case, I'm keeping it simple, so I'm just going to have it so that you can select um, you know, 0 through 2300, and that's pretty much it. Then ultimately what we're going to do is as we go through our calendar for that particular day, if a time overlaps, a time in here, we simply remove it from the array, and then we send back the new um, array. So this is the next change here, time min, time max. The original file had this, max results, order by single events, and time min. You don't need all of these, you just need time min and time max. So we're saying time min is the start time. So we're going to say date, which is the date we just created here. Get timestamp. All right, time max, date, day after, get timestamp. So we're saying get everything from our calendar on this date. And then down here, we're going to loop through all of the items on that date. And we're going to remove anything that matches the start time. So just think about that for a second. Uh, if it doesn't make sense, just you know, rewind the video, watch it again. But we're just looping through the returned events from our calendar and then removing any overlapping events so that it doesn't show up in our dropdown. All right, so this is a new function here, schedule me. Now, a lot of code here, but guess what? More stuff that we don't have to recreate. So if you go out to events, insert, so here, developers.google.com slash calendar slash v3 slash reference slash event slash insert. You can see that there's a nice little tutorial here of how to insert an event. Make sure you have the PHP selected. And I literally just copied this over. So I copied this here. I pasted it over here, starting with the Google service calendar event here. And then everything down here I changed as needed. So summary can be whatever you want to call it. Um, say, you know, it could be an address if you're doing um, a property viewing. If you're doing location, you can put the location of it. Uh, all of these can also be sent in as get variables if we think about it. So back on our index file, we've got some query strings here where date equals blah and time equals blah. You can say and address equals whatever you want. And then you can pass that over to your calendar and then it can fill whatever you want dynamically into that field, um, where description equals whatever. So here's the, uh, the part that really matters, though. 
the start and end. This is what I had to change from the template. Um, so I did America Chicago because that's where I'm at. And my date time, my start date time, is going to be the date time that I created up above. And then the end is the end date time that I created up above. Attendees, uh, something else that can be dynamic. If you want to send in, say you have a customer that puts in their email address on your website and they click submit. Once they click submit, you can pass this in as a get variable as well. Um, in our case, we're just using abc123 at gmail. Um, guests can invite other others, true or false. Um, there's lots of options here. But basically, if you just go to uh, Google and Google uh, Google Service Calendar, if you go to this link here, you're going to find all sorts of cool stuff, um, lots of different classes, and then ways that you can utilize those classes. Uh, send notifications equals true. I added that because I want them to be reminded. They will get an email once they are um, coming up time. Primary can be any email you want. Primary simply means the authenticated user. So that is it. So once that's all done, you want to go to connection. So let's pull up our PowerPoint, make sure we're on track here. Um, we've modified the get times. We've modified schedule me. Now we need to modify connection.php. So we need to change the permission set first. So up here in the original one, you can see it says calendar read only. Now that we're going to insert an event into the calendar, we need to make sure we have modify rights. So we're going to change calendar read only to just calendar. And so let me go into the new the new file here. You can see it just says calendar. And then I also changed my time zone to American, America Chicago. So make sure that you change yours to whatever your whatever is applicable for your area. That's the only change that needs to happen there. Uh, the final thing that needs to happen is out in your web server, you've got this credentials folder that was created automatically uh, last time you, we went through the video. Uh, in part one. You want to get rid of that. And the reason why is because these credentials were created utilizing the calendar read-only permissions. If you try to use it again with after changing this, it's going to fail and say you don't have the permissions to do so. And that's it. So uh, we've changed permissions, we changed default time zone, and we make sure that we return from our calendar um, back your event has been scheduled. So I basically say schedule me, schedule me calls create event, which creates the event, then it returns, and then it says your event has been scheduled. And then over in index.php, I say document.getElementById dump, which is our p tag that we had from the previous video. Um, and then I'm going to put the response text, which will be your um, event has been scheduled onto the screen so you can see that it's done. So let's look at this really quick in action. So let's start here. And you see I've got some available times. Let me do um, 1700. If I click schedule me, actually, you know, what? let me do it this way. Let me pull this out so you can see it happen. All right. So if I click schedule me right now, I've got nothing at five o'clock. All right. You see that just populated into my calendar. So now if I refresh the screen, and select the date again, you can see that 1700 is no longer available. So I can fill up this day with as many uh, with as many events as I'd like, but um, each time I do that, it's going to populate it into my calendar and then remove it from the next person that decides to go in to schedule something. Uh, so the possibilities are endless here, and there's a lot of sites out here that are paid sites that do the exact same thing as this, um, but we built this here, you know, and I built it in about 30 minutes, and that is it. Um, Comment below, questions below, uh, subscribe, and hope to see you guys back here soon. Uh, if you would like to see or learn anything specific, feel free just to toss a, a note below and ask if you're struggling with something. I'll do, do my best to help you guys out. And that is all. Thank you. Bye.